How's it going everyone? Today, I just wanted to put out a quick video going over New Game Plus and Persona 5 Strikers. Specifically, how to unlock it, as it's not really as simple as just beating the game. And while I'm at it, I wanted to go ahead and touch on what actually carries over, as well as briefly going over the New Game Plus exclusive difficulty option, Risky. So as I said, unlocking New Game Plus and Persona 5 Strikers isn't as simple as just beating the game and making a clear game save file. This time around, you must complete a request in which you are tasked with fighting and defeating the Reaper. But in order to actually do that, there are 13 other requests that you must complete first. Seven of these requests will come from Lavinza, where she will task you with tracking down and defeating a powerful persona. These are essentially mini-boss encounters, and upon completion of each of these requests, you will gain the ability to fuse that request's target persona. Most of these can be completed before you beat the game, but one of them isn't available until after you've beaten the final boss. As for the other 5 requests, they are only available after beating the game's final boss. For those, you will be tasked with going back to 5 of the game's major boss fights and fighting a more difficult version of them. Once all of that is done, you will be given the request to fight the Reaper himself. Simply make your way to the entrance of his arena, and you can start the encounter. So in summary for what you need to do to actually unlock New Game Plus, you need to complete the 7 Persona Unlock requests from Lavinsa, you need to then complete the 5 hard mode versions of the game's boss fights, and then you need to beat the Reaper himself. Now that we've covered how to unlock New Game Plus, let's go over what actually carries over and what is new for New Game Plus. First and foremost, the standard things that pretty much always carry over, carry over, such as equipment, items, money, persona points, and persona compendium completion. Additionally, your character's levels, including their personas levels, will also carry over, as will your band level and any unlocked band skills and unused band points. Then, once you've actually started New Game Plus, a few things will be different from a fresh start. For starters, Wolf will be available as a party member from the very beginning, and you will also have access to Sophia's shop which will now sell incense items. Additionally, you will be able to fuse the final persona for the compendium as soon as you gain access to the Velvet Room. The last thing that is available on New Game Plus is the game's hardest difficulty mode, Risky. So Risky is a very challenging difficulty mode. And unlike with the rest of the game, you can't actually change the difficulty once you've put it on Risky. To help put the difficulty level of this mode into perspective, my level 99 Joker, with Persona that have 99 in all stats, takes upwards of almost two-thirds of his HP and damage from just the normal enemies within the first jail. So if you plan on tackling Risky, you will definitely want to spend some time preparing. Now you may be wondering, why should I even care about Risky? And to that I would say there are actually a few reasons. For one, I personally think it's incredibly fun. In fact, in the over 100 hours that I've now played of this game, I've had the most fun while playing on Risky. It's challenging, sure, but it's not unfair. You get to use all of your powerful persona from the very beginning of the game, without the game being a snooze fest due to being too overpowered. And the SP balance issues that plague a first playthrough aren't present either. But outside of that, there are actually a few things that require you to be on Risky mode in order to gain access to them. One of those are the game's best weapons. If you remember the really powerful enemies that spawned in each jail, you know, the ones that could only be defeated once? Well, those drop the game's best weapons whenever you beat them while you're playing on Risky difficulty. There are also a number of rare skill cards, some for skills that can't be obtained in any other way, that only drop from treasure demons while playing on Risky. And finally, in addition to being able to buy instances from Sophia's shop, which you can just normally do on New Game Plus, regular enemies on Risky will frequently drop them as well. So that about covers everything I wanted to touch upon in today's video. I'll have plenty more Strikers content coming out in the weeks ahead, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already so that you can get notified when new videos release. And as usual, if you have any questions about this video, Persona 5 Strikers, or any other game that I cover, you can always hit me up over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash rosalindgaming, or on my Discord server, both of which you can find links to in the video description below. Until next time, take care.